Hi, welcome back to another part for our SQL application tutorial we're doing here. In this video, we're going to continue on building the interface for our app. So in the previous videos, we've done all of these items that you see on the screen. We're at the point now where we can search for an album in our database. So what we're going to do in the future is to continue on to build all of these features until we have a complete idea of how to use MySQL. And so continue on and we'll become a software developer together. So let's take a look at the application as we're going to finish today. So you can see we have a little icon on the screen that shows a picture of the album cover. And every time I click one of the rows in my table, you can see that the album art is displayed over here in the picture box. And so a couple of things we're gonna have to do to make this happen. First of all, we're gonna have to put this picture box on the screen, of course. The second thing is that when we click the grid, we're going to have to find out what row we're in and what column we're going to get the information from and then load that into the picture box. So when all that's done, you'll have yourself what you see on the screen here. So let's get started with the code. Okay, so I've reversed the application. So now the picture box is gone and we're ready to start adding that feature now together. So I'm gonna close this and start the uh, process. So here's the process. We're going to take this form and put a picture box on it. So let's go find the picture box first of all. And let's see, it's called picture box right there. It's in WinForms, it's as simple as dragging something onto the screen and changing the size. Okay, so now let's check to see if we can add something to that box. So you can see that it's, it's empty right now. And uh, there's multiple ways to put a picture into a box. What we're going to do is use the URL from one of our videos. So to get one of the video URLs, I'm going to go to the PHP My Admin page, and then I'm going to find the, let's say the first one here. So let's do a Control A to Control Select It All, Control C to copy it, and then let's come back into the uh, Visual Studio. Now in here, we're gonna be able to add this, and I need some kind of an event to do that. For right now, I'm just going to choose Load Albums, and at the end of the album, I'm going to load this. So let's see, if I type in picture one, box one, and then there is a command for load, I believe it is, yes. So it's as simple as telling it what URL you want. So I'm gonna put in a quotation marks, paste in the string, and a semicolon. So that should load an image from the internet. It's as simple as that. So let's go ahead and run it and test it out. So when I click the load albums, you can hopefully see there is the picture. So that is Abbey Road. If I click any of these things, it doesn't change. So we've still got that to go. And it appears that only the top left corner of the album is showing. So those are the things that we still have to do. But we have proven that we can load a picture from the internet. First of all, I want to change the property of this picture. So let's click here. And let's go down to the bottom where it says appearances. Now what I'm looking for is a way to scale this image. And I'm not quite sure which one was. Ah, uh, here it is. It's called size mode. So right now it's set at normal. And let's look at the choices. So stretch might be the first thing you think of, but you can get all kinds of weird warped pictures. The one we're looking for is zoom. And the others you can experiment with, but for right now we're just going to try zoom. And let's run it again to check, to check to see what kind of a picture look that looks like. So I click on load albums and there I get the whole photo. So it's scaled proportionately and it um, automatically adjusts to the frame. Very nice. So I'm not really interested in seeing Abbey Road every time I click the grid. I want to see the actual picture that I'm supposed to get from the grid. So let's click the grid once. Now you might be tempted to double click the grid if you want an event to occur. So that's like clicking a button. But in this case, what I want to do is to go to the properties and choose the events and look at my choices. So the mouse has a click cell, click contents, and cell double click. So let's do click cell. So I'm in this square here, I'm just going to double click here. And now I have a cell click event. This one works better than the other two, I can guarantee you that, but um, just take my word on it. So now what I wanna do is uh, check to see if this actually works. So the simplest way to do a test is to do a message box and show it. Let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, so I'm gonna load some albums and then I'm going to click something. And sure enough, it says clicked. So you can see I can click on any cell in the grid and I get a clicked message. Now, how can I tell which cell I clicked? Right now it's just kind of generally saying you clicked a cell. 
So the key here is the word sender. If you look into the uh, parameters that the click event has, sender is the item that is sending this message. So I'm going to save the sender as a data grid view object. So I assume that the sender is always the data grid view. So I will just say that is equal to the sender. Now you can see that there is a problem. So sender is a generic object and data grid view is a specific type of object. So to make this fix occur, it says, uh, would you like to do a cast? So let's go ahead and choose this and add the explicit cast and tells it now that I guarantee you that if this receives a click event, it's coming from a grid view. So now I want to capture some values about the grid. So for instance, the row number. So let's create an integer variable and name it uh, row clicked. We're going to get it from the data grid view dot current row dot index. So current row is the current row that's selected and index is the row number. And then I'm going to do a message box to show some feedback so we can see if this is actually doing what we want. We want to get the row number, remember? So let's go ahead and click the go button and see what this message box shows. So we show the albums first and now when we click something you can see that it says I clicked row number three. Now count these down. So uh, Abbey Road is zero, let it be is one, help is two, and then revolver is three. So it is not showing me the album ID number, it's showing me the row number. So this is row number zero. And let's see what the last one is. So it's not 17, it is row six. So now that I have the row number, I can go get the columns. So if you, if you count the columns, just like the rows, we have ID is zero, uh, album name is one, artist two, at, um, year is three and image URL would be fourth. So the fourth column of the row that was clicked contains the string that we want to put in the picture box. Okay, let's see if we can get all that in code. Okay, so here's the process. Now we're going to create another string and it's going to be called image URL. So we're going to get this from the data grid view and the type ahead help is really pretty much right on here. It's pretty close. I want to get the data grid view dot rows and then in square brackets, tell it which row number, which is the row clicked. Then I want to get the cells. So a little bit off on this one, but cells. And I want to get cells, uh, the array of cells at uh, position four. And that's actually the fifth column. And then I want to get this value and then change it into a string. And then I've got myself the value that I'm trying to put into the picture box. Let's put a message box out to test this one and see if that's doing what we expect. Let's run it again and check. Okay, away we go. So we click on albums and let's click something. So it says here you clicked row two and the image URL is this thing. Is that indeed what we're after? So it looks like uh, the Beatles album cover. Uh, oh, help, there, that's the word, help. Okay, let's try another one. Let's go to the Abbey Road and do we get anything? So we got zero and then it looks to me like Abbey Road is in the file name. So We've, we've got the right URL now. All we have to do now is put it into the picture box. All right, so I'm a little tired of hearing these picture box things show up, so I'm gonna comment them out so they're out of the way. So the last statement that I'm looking for is picture box one dot load, and then in parentheses, I have to put the string of that image. And so that is a string that we just created a minute ago. It's called image URL. So that should load the picture every time we click a cell. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, the albums are loaded now. And let's pick somebody. Let's try Let It Be. And it looks like it. Help. And Revolver. Rubber Soul. They're all coming up. Nice. So all of my pictures are being loaded based on the image URL field that is over here in column number five. So the next video that we're going to do is going to be inserting new records. So we need to create a little data input form and add new albums as the user chooses to. So let's do that in the next step.